Amen, amen. That was good worship. It is always a joy to be with you and to fix our eyes and our hope on the one who changes everything, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. On Wednesday nights, we've been walking through uh, the names of God, and I've been teaching you uh, about the, the compound use of the name of God that occurs in Scripture. And last week, we looked at uh, Yahweh Yireh, um, the, the compound name uh, about the Lord provides from Genesis 22, uh, one of the most familiar passages in the whole of Scripture. Tonight, uh, we're going to look at another very familiar passage to you, and that's in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And you know this as the story of David and Goliath, okay? David and Goliath. And uh, when, when David, uh, when the battle reaches its, its climax, when David rushes to face Goliath, he, he yells at him, I, I come in you in the name of Yahweh Chisaba. T-S-A-B-A, to Saba, which means the Lord of the army or the host, that he is Yahweh who is, has an army with him, okay? Um, I need to quick, I'm going to quickly run through this narrative and this dialogue, and, and we need to do it twice, okay? Uh, and, and the first, here's the deal. When, when you read Old Testament stories and and they are, uh, there's a hero in that story, and that hero is just like this shining example of, of just heroic faith. That is pointing to Jesus, okay? Every single one of them is pointing and teaching you about Jesus, uh, about the hero who is to come, okay? So, you set the scene in 1 Samuel 17, and that is uh, the, the Israelites are going to war against the Philistines. Remember, that is always because of sin, always because of sin. The Lord allows the enemies to come against God's people. Um, and as the battle lines are drawn on, on two uh, hillsides with a valley between Goliath comes out as a representative from the Philistine army, and he taunts God's army. He taunts the army of Israel. And Goliath is the one who, who sets the scene and, and draws the terms, and this is a representative fight, okay? And as he, he lays out... Uh, here I am, I am one soldier from the army of the Philistines, and you have one man come out on your side to fight against me, okay? Now, uh, in Goliath's initial taunt, he says, aren't you uh, the army of King Saul, right? So, so you would be looking like, is there anyone? Is there anyone on our side who can come out? But no one is found worthy. Why? Because Goliath is huge, He's nine and a half feet tall, okay? He is a trained warrior from his youth. He has armor that weighs 175 pounds, okay? That, that's more than David weighs at that time. He has armor that he just carries around for his protection. He has a javelin uh, that is thick. It's honking thick, all right? He carries a javelin, and he has a sword, a double-edged sword, and he wields it like no one. He is an un beatable enemy. And there is no one who is worthy to go face him. And the army looks, and, and they, each man knows that he in his own right is unworthy, and he is hopeful and longing. Is there some representative? Is there one of us who can go and stand on our behalf? But none is found. Scripture declares that you and I have, that you and I too have an unbeatable enemy. His name is Satan, and he is huge, and he is powerful, and he is dark. He is unbelievably scary. And the Scripture says that he stood before God, and he made accusations of your sin before God day and night. 
You know what makes it worse of all? He was right. All of his accusations were right. And like Israel, you, you scan the scene before you and you are defeated in your sin and you are taunted and there is no hope. But then comes forth from the unlikeliest of sources, a hero, a shepherd, from a small family in a small town of Bethlehem. And he had faith whenever no one else had faith. He knew God. He had a heart that knew God on a personal relationship like no one else. And he had been trained and prepared by God ahead of time. And without a sword, he goes and he stands before the enemy and he killed the enemy of God's people. I tell you all of that because you must know and understand David and Goliath is ultimately pointing to Jesus and the victor that would come on our behalf in Jesus. I I need to read for you Revelation chapter 12 and the picture that is painted about the victory that unfolded after Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension into heaven. It says, now there was war in heaven, Michael and his angel waging war with the dragon, The dragon and his angels weighed war, and and they were not strong enough. And there was no longer any place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He has been thrown down to the earth, and his angels thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. He who accuses them before our God day and night, they overcame him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony and they did not love their life even when faced to death. For this reason rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them and woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has come down to you having great wrath knowing that his time is short. So I need you to hear me say the purpose of the story of David and Goliath is that there is coming a savior like David, who defeats your ultimate enemy. But it's also important, and you and I read this story and we identify with it greatly because David is also an incredible example of faith. And the reason why I'm teaching this in terms of uh, the names of God is the way that David uses faith and to teach you and I to use the name of God and to call upon the name of God when we are in the midst of the crisis. So there, the army lines are set again, right? Face to face with the enemy. You and I know this in our own lives in terms of there is Goliath. There is a Goliath, an enemy that is in front of us. That scripture in Revelation chapter 12 said that the devil left heaven and came down to the earth knowing that his time was short. And by the way, he's furious, he's angry, and he stirs up as much confusion and dissension as he possibly can. You have an enemy in your life. He is defeated, but he is a real enemy. Now, on top of that, you and I face trials that loom large in our life. And so when we read this story, right, we even sing about it sometimes. And when we say there's a popular song right now, I may not face Goliath, but I have my own giants. Why? You see, Goliath is big. He's giant. He's an undefeatable enemy. And by the way, he is beyond our strength. That's what Israel said whenever Goliath stood forward and taunted them uh, day after day. In verse 11, it says that they were dismayed and greatly afraid. But then comes along David, and listen to David in verse 26. He says, because he showed up at the battlefield, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the armies of the living God like this? See, what happened right there was a complete change in perspective. David trusted and knew who he was in God. 
And he immediately brought a change in perspective to the story. Did you know that the sun is 864,000 miles wide? Okay, that's a big sun. Did you know that if you stood outside with a quarter and held it right here, it would block out the sun? Why is that? A change in perspective. As David comes in and assesses the scene, he immediately says, yes, that giant may be bigger than me, but he isn't bigger than my God. And the perspective changes everything. I remember once uh, my little nephew uh, came over to our house, and we, we have little schnauzers, little mini schnauzers, and he, and he came over, and he was afraid of the dog, and we cannot stop our dogs from barking when people come over, all right? If you got those little ones, that's what they do all the time, and he was scared to death, and one time I, I bent down, and I scooped him up, right? There he is, afraid and petrified, but now that he is here, and he grabs my neck, suddenly he stops shaking, he looks, and the fear is gone, and then he, he looks down at the dog, and the expression on his face changes because he looks at me, looks at the dog. Everything changes. Perspective is everything. Dear Christian, Ephesians 2, 6 says that God has raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay? He has seated us with him, this perspective that you and I have been placed in Christ and that in Christ we have every promise that is attached to it. So catch this, at the climactic battle scene, when the time comes, okay, David comes out and faces Goliath. There's so many truths that we could comb through as you go through here. But as you get to this climactic battle scene, as David comes before Goliath, okay, he comes out there, and Goliath is insulted. He's insulted that this little boy would come out. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he had disdain for him, that he was but a youth and a rudy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And then the Philistine cursed David by his gods. All right? So this is a battle of gods, and the Philistine is like, who is this little boy that comes against me? Verse 45, and then David said to the Philistine, you come at me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of Yahweh Tsaba, the Lord of hosts. That is the name I come at you. Okay, and you will this day realize who my God is. All right, so we've unfolded all of this. Why? Because I want each of us to know and to understand that the use of the names of God in our lives, okay? You need to picture this scene of David standing before Goliath as you stand before obstacles in your life where, remember, the perspective. He's a giant. This is too big. I can't handle it. I, I can't comprehend. How could I ever go against him or that or this circumstance? I am overwhelmed. I am defeated. I don't have the strength for it. And David comes along. He says, listen, listen, listen. Use the name of God. I come against you in the name of Yahweh Tzavah, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies. He is the one who fights for me. Beloved, he has given you promises. He's given you every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He has chosen you. He has adopted you. Okay? He has redeemed you. He's placed his spirit inside of you. He gives you passion and a purpose to live out life. There's an inheritance that is waiting for you in heaven that cannot, it will not fade away. You have the promises of, you have been seated with him in the heavenly places. Call upon him. Yes, Goliath's big and scary. Of course he's bigger than you. Of course he's beyond your strength. Use the names of God. Will you pray with me? Our heavenly father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are, Yahweh to Saba, 
There is no God like you, Yahweh. There is no God like you who fights our battles. And we call upon you. There is no God like you who has sent his son and defeated our greatest enemy. That is sin and death and Satan. All that stood against us, your son defeated. And you didn't stop there. You didn't leave us alone there. You continue. You continue to empower us with your promises and you charge us to rise up in faith like David and to walk out in faith and to call upon your name. And we do in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.